Google Ads and what is required in order to build and scale profitable Google Ad campaigns and literally what I've discovered after running Google Ads for over a decade. That's right, today I'm gonna to be taking you behind the scenes to if even if you're a total beginner, how by the end of this one video and how this is the one video you'll ever need when it comes to starting Google Ads, getting massive traffic from it, but most importantly, running profitable ads from AdWords. So the first thing I'd like to do is just to show you um, what I've been doing on Google in literally the last decade. Uh, this is one of my first ever Google ads account and as you can see um, I started running ads on Google back in 2007 and one of the things that I did is back then when I first started off um, I was in like the world of Warcraft niche and in world of Warcraft back then there were a lot of ton of scams um, I ran uh, different ads educating people the different scams in world of Warcraft uh, Starcraft and I literally spent thousands of dollars in the gaming niche as you can see like this first uh, Warcraft site alone, I spent like 45 grand on it in Starcraft and all these different um, sites. I've spent uh, easily over a million dollars on the gaming site alone in the gaming niche. And today I'm gonna be showing you like literally what I discovered when it comes to running profitable ads, the mistakes I made, so that you don't have to make the mistakes that I made as well. Are you ready? So uh, in this training, when it comes to running profitable Google ads, um, it literally comes down to these few things, okay? Um, the first one is, it all begins with really keyword research, okay? If you wanna run profitable ads, it really comes down to first, understanding what type of keywords do you wanna be targeting. Based on what people are searching for, the supply and demand for that keyword will come uh, into that. And uh, deeper into that, uh, number two, after we do our research, I'm gonna be showing you in here again, basically how do you set up these different campaigns within ad, uh, Google Ads. Uh, once we talk about the campaigns, number three, the third thing we're gonna be talking about is the ad group. Which ad group does it fall under? Uh, number four, once we understand which ad group does it fall under, we're gonna talk about the ad campaign. And finally, number five, now this is gonna seem a little bit dry and technical. Uh, we're gonna talk about the setup. In AdWords, we're gonna talk about scaling, we're gonna talk about the advanced stuff. But literally, this is the five-step process when it comes to starting an, a Google ad uh, campaign. When it comes to actually running it, it's gonna be a little bit tactical, but I'm also gonna be showing you like actual case studies of things that we did uh, literally in the last decade. Let's begin with the keyword research. Okay, so I'm gonna head over into my laptop right now and here's the thing about keyword research. When it comes to keyword research, Google has this free tool called the Google Keyword Planner. And the thing about Google Keyword Planner to do your keyword research is you need to have a Google Ads account. So I'm gonna pretend, well I'm not gonna pretend, I'm gonna actually create a brand new account together with you. So when you go to Google Ads, this is literally the first page that you will see. And one of the things that they will do is they ask you these different advertising goals. Um, but actually, if you were to switch to the expert mode, uh, it's actually a whole lot faster. So I'm just gonna click on that in order to create uh, my new account. So it asks me what do I wanna do. Um, I'm just gonna start off by creating, saying that my goal is to create website traffic and my campaign type is going to be based on search. So what that means is I wanna create a campaign based on what people are searching for when they search on Google, whenever they type in their keywords uh, inside Google. So it asks me for my uh, website name. So one of the things you've heard me say in previous training, other training videos is that uh, you never really wanna have a website, you wanna have like a sales process or a funnel, okay? So um, let's just take one of my funnels. So let's say I'm gonna create one of my sales processes on public speaking, okay? So it's called uh, platformclosing.com. Okay, I'm gonna continue. Oops, I've got two dots in there. So let me just press back. I'm gonna make the adjustments. One dot, okay? Uh, press continue. Okay, so this is the campaign name. So uh, how do we, set it all up. So number one is it's gonna ask me for my campaign name. I'm just gonna put in my 
website name, platform closing, um, and I'm gonna call it uh, generic, okay, general, generic. First things first, okay, so we're gonna do our keyword research, but it's kind of like chicken and egg thing. I can only do my keyword research when I wanna put in my keywords, so I gotta set up the groundwork first, so that's what we're doing right now. So, a um, couple of tips here, okay, if you do not wanna burn money, if you do not want to burn money, the first thing you got to do is you got to uncheck this search network. What this basically means is that when you do not want to be included in Google search partners, this means that other sites that, Google's, uh, that Google owns, your keyword and your bid will not begin, will not have there. This is great for scaling when you have something that's profitable, but as a way of starting out, I would not recommend this, and especially not Google Display Network. Um, I remember when I was first starting out and I didn't know this, I just left it to default. And this thing here really burns money if you're starting out and you don't really know what it is that you're doing yet, okay? So you do not want this on Google Display Network yet because it's gonna blast it out to like millions of other sites out there. And then under more settings, you don't have to uh, test out anything. In terms of location, okay? Uh, one of the things, depending on where you're marketing to, I always like to start off with just uh, United States, okay? So it really depends where you are located and uh, your target market. So I know that my ideal audience is in the US, okay, so the US. And other than that, lang language will be English. Put in a budget. So I am going to put in, I'm gonna start off with, let's say $100. And what do I wanna focus on? I'm just gonna put on clicks for now, and I wanna save and continue. Okay, so this is basically the groundwork. We are still working on the keyword research, okay? We wanna be able, to um, do keywords research. Okay, so this is where it's gonna ask me for my ad group, okay? So under your campaign, there's an ad group. So under the ad group name, this is where I wanna focus on like main keywords first, okay? So my site is, if I were to show you like how it looks like. So basically this is called Platform Closing. It is a site that teaches people how to speak, present and close online and offline. So one of the things that I wanna think about is my ideal customers, where they're hanging out, and what kind of keywords are they searching for? So if they search for this keyword, I will lead them to my funnel and my sales process. By the way, if you don't have a sales process or you don't know how to build one, I've included in the description box below, you'll be able to get this exact sales processes. There's many different sales processes, whether it's free plus shipping, a webinar funnel, a high ticket application funnel. I'll list a few of them below in the description box below. Okay, so once I send them, once I think about my keywords, so for example, it could be public speaking. So I'm gonna type in public speaking and I wanna start off by putting in public speaking in here and I can get some keyword ideas in here as well and see what Google comes up with. So let's say public speaking, speech, skills, anxiety, techniques, coach. Okay, so all these are all public speaking related, right? Improved public speaking, effective public speaking. Okay, let me explain to you what all these mean, okay? Now, by default, if I leave it like this, it's, it's broad match. So what that means is if I were to, if someone rather were to put this on Google, public speaking. If they were to put in other type of keywords in between, so let's say they type in public speaking Ukraine or something, okay? My ad would still show because this is broad. Now, if I were to put in exact, that means it will only appear if this exact phrase, so this is a phrase match, if this exact phrase is typed out. So for example, public speaking Ukraine, because public speaking as a phrase is over here, this ad would still appear. However, if it says public Ukraine speaking, then my ad will not appear, okay? So that's basically what this means. I'll show you what is the best practice. And if it says exact match, exact match means it would only appear if it's exactly public speaking. So if it's public speaking Ukraine or public speaking training, Okay, it will not appear, okay? So usually what I would like is, I would like to create separate ad groups for these two variations. I do not like to use uh, broad, okay? Because broad opens up a whole, like it becomes really broad. And one of the things that we'll talk about as well is negative keywords later on, which is basically keywords you're gonna add in. 
Um, so basically, if I had all these different uh, variations, so I want to have different ad groups for these different type of keywords so it gives me better analytics on the phrase match as well as exact match. So because I am self teaching people, not just public speaking, but how to speak and close on stages, I want to be able to have and see what my bids are for these few different uh, keywords, okay? So let's, say, let's just say I utilize these few keywords, okay? So let's say anxiety, okay? And, and I always want to make it tight in terms of just a few keywords and not put in like, a hundred keywords or a dozen keywords in here. And you'll see why that is the case in a second. But all I'm doing right now, which is basically what you wanna do, is I am uh, applying a best practice in terms of keywords so that it's not just broad. Um, techniques is, is probably good. I wanna leave that in here. Okay, so let's just utilize this as an example, okay? So now we have these different variations in here. Um, of both phrase matches as well as exact matches. Now, once I do that, this is when I am going to uh, continue, okay? Save and continue. So right now, I'm setting up my ad, okay? I'm, I'm doing my keyword research, okay? And when it comes to writing the ad, okay? Now, let me show you how the ad should usually be written, okay? Now, the headline, in most cases, should always match the keyword that you are targeting. By the way, so if I were to press back, one of the things you might notice is that in the keywords I was targeting, it was like, it was pretty broad, right? There was like techniques, there was public speaking fear, there's all these different things. Okay, let me show you an example. If let's say this ad group name, I wanna focus on just one, here's how you can make it even better. If I were to type in this first ad group called public speaking fear. Now fear is a big keyword. I wanna have just one ad group for this public speaking fear as a phrase match as well as an exact match. If you wanna do things um, and cut down your cost, okay, so this is the next level here. I wanna have just this headline, how you write a headline. In most cases, you wanna match it with the keyword that you're targeting, okay? so. What is this keyword? It is public speaking fear. One of the things I wanna do is, I wanna have like, for example, fear of public speaking. You wanna have congruence. Add congruence with what you're searching for and the title of the ad, right? So right now there's congruence, right? Because now a person is searching for either public speaking fear, phrase match or exact match, and they will only see this if there's a phrase or exact match, and they will see this headline fear of public speaking. You always wanna have the headline match your ad, and then your headline number two and three should sell them the benefit, okay? Number two should always be the benefit. So what's the benefit of overcoming this fear, All right? Discover, so for example, how to overcome, discover how to overcome this, and then there could be a, a call to action. The call to action, could, that could be the feature, could be your framework, could be your steps. Use this five-step process. So imagine this now, okay, congruence. A person is now searching on Google, fear, uh, fear of public speaking, and then they see an ad, fear of public speaking, discover how to overcome this, use this five-step process, okay? So now, it goes to website name.com. Description one is literally the thing that will appear on the description, okay? So sometimes I could utilize the, the copy, okay? And on my website, now, because I'm lazy and I'm just gonna utilize, we wanna get this up and running. So I could literally just have a short description. So somebody is searching for your public speaking, discover how to overcome this, use this five-step process, website name.com, discover how to go on any platform, online and offline, and present with confidence, have your audience hanging on your every word, okay? Done, okay? So save and continue. One policy, okay, so, oh, discovers dot, dot, dot. Okay, so I kind of have dot, dot, dot. Save and continue. Okay, so done. Okay, so right now, it's gonna ask me to set up my billing, okay? And, um, and then I will be set up, okay? So notice what I'm doing here is I've gone over through utilizing, doing my keyword research. So one of the things that I wanna do next is I wanna share with you uh, how do you actually refine this? So this is literally the basic step. Let's talk about um, some more advanced stuff. How do we take things further in terms of not just writing the ad, but polishing it up and making it better, okay? So we've talked about 
having your ad have congruence with the title. But the next thing I wanna talk about is how do you actually discover more keywords? How do you actually make it better? Okay, so um, what I'd like to do next is um, let's talk about negative keywords. Okay, so um, because this is a brand new account, I'm just going to go back to my campaign. Okay, I need to put in a, key, um, a, a credit card that's um, active. But right now you'll see that my account here is all set up, okay, with the basics just now. So one of the things that I wanna do is inside my account, which is public speaking fear. Remember we had like two different campaigns. One was with these few keywords and another one addressing their fears. Now, one of the things that I wanna do is under keywords, um, I can actually add negative keywords. Now, what is a negative keyword? A negative keyword is basically a keyword, if you add it in here, your ad will never appear as long as the keyword's in there. So for example, what is a negative keyword? For, so for example, I probably do not want the word free. Because if somebody's typing in fear of public speaking, free training, their mindset is probably different and that they are not looking for a paid product. I probably do not want the word torrent. I probably do not want the negative keyword PDF. I probably do not want the keyword Udemy, right? So for you, think about what are your negative keywords. If you are in, say, e-commerce, chances are your negative keywords could be Amazon, it could be uh, Target, right? Because if they are typing in the physical product name with the word Amazon, chances are they're looking to buy it straight from Amazon. They're not looking it to buy it from, from anywhere else. And, and if you're bidding on those keywords, you would be wasting money, right? So free torrent, PDF, Udemy, right? These are pro probably good keywords for me to include because, uh, well, not probably, they are definitely good negative keywords for me to include because if somebody is searching for these keywords, they are probably not buyers, okay? Think about what are the negative keywords for you. Include them inside your campaigns, okay? Now, next one is to think about your keyword plan, right, by doing keyword research. So one of the things that you can do is you can use Google's free keyword tool called the Keyword Planner. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I'm just gonna Google this, Google Keyword Planner. And one of the things that you will be able to access is the Google Keyword Planner once you sign up for an account. Okay, now that you have set this up, uh, Google Ads will allow you to use their Google Keyword tool, which is called Keyword Planner. So one of the things that you wanna be able to do is to get different ideas on how to utilize this, okay? Now, how do you utilize this? We had the bare bones set up um, for public speaking, okay? But one of the things we wanna be able to do is we wanna be able to expand to more keywords. And one of the ways you do that is by going to tools and settings and looking for the keyword planner, okay? So the keyword planner is a great way to discover new keywords, to search for that volume and, and so for example, public speaking, okay? I wanna be able to get some ideas on how to bid on these keywords, okay? So for example, over here, I can see that there are all these different keywords and how to understand this is to look at volume, okay? Which is your how, how many searches are there per month, okay? With respect to the competition. Okay, so ultimately, it would be ideal if there is high searches with low competition. Okay, now, this doesn't necessarily it needs to fit that criteria, but that would be an ideal situation. Okay, so for example, you can see here, the cost per click of fear of public speaking is $2. However, public speaking speech is only 65 cents, right? So this keyword here is going to be three times cheaper than fear of public speaking, which is the, the keyword that we utilized just now. So one of the things that I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to start adding these new keywords as either, uh, so like I, I mentioned, broad is great only when you wanna scale, but in most cases I use exact and phrase match. So one of the things that I wanna do is I'm gonna add in the keywords that I feel is applicable. So talk like public speaking, uh, speech anxiety, that's not bad art of public speaking. So if I want to start expanding, 
I am now utilizing these keywords, but I want to be able to group them so that there is congruence between my ad and the keyword that I am targeting. So that means that if I want to target a different keyword that is going to be slightly different, I want to have a different ad title with a different call out, right? So the one that we did just now was public speaking fear. And that's why my ad says fear of public speaking. But let's take, um, for example, an ad or a keyword, let's say, so this is fear, best public speaking, persuasive public speaking, okay? So let's say, if I were to bid on this keyword, right? Persuasive public speaking, let me just give you an idea. It would make no sense if, or rather, it wouldn't be as effective if, I, if somebody's typed in persuasive public speaking and then an ad that says fear of public speaking, right? Because chances are there's that disconnect and that's when there's incongruence and that's when the, the, the person that's searching would feel like, hey, that wasn't me. And if your click-through rate, which means the odds of somebody clicking on your ad falls, your ad price increases. Right, so let me just kind of show you the, how to understand the psychology of this. You see, Google doesn't just want to be the best search engine in the world. Google also wants to be the best paid search engine in the world. And in order to put that burden on you, the advertiser, to come up with great good ads, what they're really looking for is they have this formula, which is basically they want to look at how often are people clicking on your ads, which is basically the click-through rate. And they also want to see how much your bid is. So how they rank your ad is basically these two things. How often are people clicking on your ads? If people are clicking your ads often and you have a high click-through rate, this tells Google that your ad is highly targeted because people are clicking on it. Therefore, if your click-through rate is low, not only does your ad fall in the ranking of your ads, but it also means that in order to sustain that position, you gotta increase your bid, right? So your ad position, you either be number one on Google by either paying more for it or having a high click-through rate, right? That's how you become number one. So if you're gonna pay less and bid less on your ad, and if you want to maintain the position, your click-through rate has got to go up. So how do you have this high click-through rate? You have this high click-through rate by having a good congruence with your keyword that you're bidding for together with your actual ad title. So for example, this example here is persuasive public speaking. If I want to create an ad that is congruent, I can't use fear of public speaking because now it makes no sense, right? It makes less sense rather. So the, my ad, should be persuasive public speaking. Same thing, if somebody is searching for the TED Talk public speaking, um, where you can see it's like pretty, you know, expensive to bid for 259, it wouldn't make sense if my ad title again was fear of public speaking, right? The thing that's tricky with this keyword here is that you don't know if a person wants to become a TED Talk speaker or are they actually looking for videos on TED Talk? Right, so this keyword here, I want to be very careful with this and chances are if I want to bid on this keyword, it needs to be an exact match of how to talk like a TED talk. Because I want to make sure that the people I'm not including are the people that is trying to just watch TED talk videos. Does that make sense? Because that would be a non-buyer's keyword. So you gotta think really as the people that is doing the searches and really make sure that not only is there congruence, but is that an audience that is a buyer's audience? So same thing here, best public speakers in the world, chances are they're just looking for great speeches. They're probably looking for a Nelson Mandela speech or something, right? Or, or um, real movers and uh, motivators and watching how these people do it rather than actually buying a product on it, okay? So this is how you start getting ideas and how you start having this foundation. Uh, in future videos, we're gonna go deeper into this, but this is literally how you get started from an absolute beginner by understanding the psychology of what 
Google is looking out for by understanding congruence, by understanding that you need to start with keyword research, going to campaign your ad group, making sure that your ad campaign uh, has congruence with what people are searching for, and that's how you set it up utilizing this thought process. As always, let me know in the comment section below what your biggest takeaway is, uh, what your action steps are gonna be, your results, and as always, make sure you smash the like button if you've gotten value from this video um, and subscribe to future videos just like this one when we release them. This is Ping Jun here. Thank you for watching this and I'll see you in our future videos. So if you like this video on traffic, this book right here that was just released by my friend Russell Brunson um, was, is literally the number one book on traffic. I literally paid $50,000 for this book. And the reason for that is because I'm part of Russell Brunson's mastermind that's $50,000 a year. And one of the things that he did is he gave this book to us uh, about half a year before it went public. But it's finally live right now. And if you like to get a copy of this book, the details are below this video in the description. And one of the things that I did to support my friend Russell Brunson is I've prepared all these different bonuses that helps you with the streamlining of your traffic creating systems around it, but most importantly, implementing all of the strategies in here. Details are all below this link. If you're gonna get the number one best book on traffic, you might as well get some killer bonuses together with it. Details are below in the description box. I'll see you on the other side.